Yeah, I just gave you guys because Mark's on right. Where'd you guys on? Well, one thing that's strange about the whole thing is this parcel of land doesn't belong to anybody right. or anything. It's not our problem, I guess. Mm -hmm. Not going to be here. I don't know. Didn't hear it. Just told me. Yeah. That should that's be for him. That's what it is. But he takes over the second mark on it. You guys have to vote. Decide who's going to run this meeting. Hey, Rick's here. Hi. How are you? Good to see you. Good. I'm so glad you're here. No, you're here. He's not here. He's here. What are you doing for tonight? When did this happen? Did you never talk to him? Oh, I assume that you had it all worked out. <laughs> And it's happening all the week. It's really going to hang up dry. <laughs> I was just hoping you'd show up tonight for the next month. You're fine. Okay. You're staying. Ooh, you might too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I was telling them there's a button here that says push. Okay. If you push that, it'll mute your microphone. You have, to, you have to keep your finger on it, though. Okay. okay. How are you? If you want to talk. Well, you were there. It's very important for you because I know you like to have a lot of fun. Good. How are you doing? That's a mute button. Good. I don't have a lot of questions. So, you've been hollering? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
We have two appeals tonight. Yes, everyone is a voting member tonight. We have uh, five of us total. <coughs> and we have two, two appeals this evening. Uh, appeal number 2619, a miscellaneous appeal uh, request by the State of Manufactured Homes on 126 U.S. Route 1, Assessor's Map R76, Parcel 7. Yes, ma'am. Uh, election of officers, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Is somebody being... Election of officers? They do it every team? single year, so... If you want to get right to business and do the election of officers after, you can do that, or if you want to table it until the next meeting. Yeah, why don't we do that? Why don't we hold off to the end of the meeting and then we don't hold everybody up? And okay. uh, probably should things. make a motion to okay. amend the agenda and move forward. Do I hear a motion? Well, as soon as then, then during, go right into the appeal. Second. All those in favor? And thank you. thank you for keeping me in line. Uh, appeal 2619. If we can have a representative step up to the podium, if you can give us your name and uh, give us a brief explanation of the appeal. Mr. Chairman and uh, members of the Planning Board of Appeals, <clears throat> my name is Alan Beagle. I'm an attorney and uh, we have an office in Portland and in Spanish and uh, I've been asked to uh, at least introduce this matter to, uh, to you this evening uh, on behalf of the uh, Hillcrest uh, Manufactured Home Community. The, um, for those of you, I thought I'd give a little bit of background just so you'll understand what the uh, community is about. Uh, the community was founded in uh, 1944. Uh, by Bob and Agnes DePossis, and um, Bob uh, died and Agnes survived him. She died in uh, September of uh, 2008, and uh, the um, community is now uh, owned and operated by uh, Teresa DePossis and the uh, in, uh, State Manufactured Homes, which is uh, owned by the DePossis family, and uh, the uh, Teresa DePossis is here tonight, along with uh, her grandson, uh, Jacob uh, Smith, and um, who uh, is learning the ropes at the Manufactured Home Center and works there full time. And also here this evening is Andy Morrill from DH2M, and Andy's here to uh, present or to uh, answer any technical questions that you might have. Um, the, uh, the the Hillcrest community has therefore been part of the uh, town of Scarborough for more than 70 years. It is a 55 and over community, meaning at least one member of the home uh, must be uh, 55 years of age or over. And um, it is a private community, meaning all roads, um, street lights, sewers uh, are owned uh, by the uh, by the community and um, are. Um, Therefore, because it is privately on the roads and the, the uh, lights and all the maintenance thereof is uh, not a burden, a uh, financial burden on the town of Scarborough. Um, and because uh, the members uh, are generally, uh, they have to be, one resident has to be at least 55, most are older, um, the, uh, they don't uh, present too much of an uh, enforcement problem for the police department. And um, few, if any of them, have uh, school-aged children. So again, there isn't um, much of a financial uh, or uh, operational uh, burden upon the town of Scarborough. The existing community center, um, we're here tonight, as I'm sure you're aware from the uh, agenda and uh, matters, for uh, a request by the um, Hillcrest uh, community that the uh, community center, uh, which it was built in 1991, uh, be expanded. Uh, the, when the community center was built in 1991, it, uh, uh, there were 160 homes in the community. Uh, in 2004, beginning really the building in 2005, um, the uh, the Foss family came in and got the permission to expand the number of homes in the community and got and received a contract zone. Um, and the uh, permitted number of houses increased from 160 to 335. And now uh, there are 
uh, 313 homes in the community, and uh, they anticipate that within the next uh, year or so, uh, the number will probably be up to 335. As a result of the number of uh, homes from 160 to 335, uh, the community center has uh, uh, a lot more persons who uh, need to fit in it when it's used. And uh, the com uh, for your information, the uh, community center uh, is used for things by the community for such things. One of the principal things is uh, for exercise, uh, daily exercise by members of the community. It's a private community center. Persons from outside uh, the uh, community are not um, do not are not permitted to use it unless they're visitors, perhaps uh, uh, members that are visitors to the uh, community uh, uh, to, to residents of the community. The, it's used like for exercise, bingo, crafts, book club meetings, um, community meals. They have a community meal uh, one time per month uh, at the community center, and then uh, a couple times a year there's a community-wide uh, party. Uh, there was a Christmas party and then a summer party. These are the kind of things that uh, the community center is used for. And as a result, of the, uh, right now the community center is 50 by, uh, it's permitted, I believe, to have, uh, to have 100 persons in it. And uh, the request will be to expand the use. Uh, usually, it, I mean, it gets crowded with 80 people in it, so usually not even 100 uh, participate. But, uh, the uh, revised expansion would allow 240 to 250 people to be able to use the community center. Um, and um, if uh, there is in the plans, in the application, uh, the uh, floor plans, and it can be put up on the wall if you have any specific questions about that. Um, the uh, I have reviewed uh, and as has uh, Andy Morrill and uh, the DeFoss, uh, Teresa DeFossis and Jake. Uh, the, um, I, I've seen staff comments that I think we received today and also a memo from Brian Longstaff of uh, December uh, 27th, I think it was, that addressed the uh, requirements. And uh, it's really section five, which goes to section 3F, to section four of the uh, zoning ordinance that set forth the standards that must be met uh, to uh, uh, permit this is because it is now a non-conforming use in the, uh, in the zone that, it, that it's in. The, um, I can, uh, we can go through those uh, in detail uh, if you wish. Uh, and uh, there, there were a couple of them that I thought might be of uh, particular interest uh, uh, just in, and I thought maybe I'd have or ask Andy Morrill to come forward and address the uh, like the wetland zoning issues or the uh, sanitary. If, if there are any particular questions, uh, you can uh, you know we can certainly address those in various standards, how to, whatever, whatever much detail you wish to go into. So I'd like Andy to come forward and address the, uh, the wetlands. So Please do. Uh, good evening, Andy Morrill from uh, CH2M. Uh, as Alan said, there was uh, some comments that were put out. I just wanted to kind of touch on the wetlands. Some of, uh, I believe it was Jay Chase's comments on, on wetlands. There was a wetland delineation done by Normandale Associates in uh, 2004 when the original approval was, was granted um, as part of the expansion of the park. Um, the applicants are, are more than willing to go out and have, a, have that redelineated. Typically, it's, it's been a handful of years since that delineation was done, so we'd be happy to go out and have that well look at looked at. Uh, Albert Frick Associates has, has been out to the site and kind of looked at it, and, and we'd be happy to have them do that. Uh, as the zoning board knows, if a positive um, motion were to be made this evening for this, we'd go back to the planning board for a site plan approval. So our intent would be to have that well delineation as we move into that process. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, actually, I uh, overlooked, and I'm sure you're probably aware of it. This is, frankly, a little unusual procedure because the um, we were before the planning board this past Monday, and the planning board for uh, this type of uh, appeal has to uh, review it and uh, 
can it get and uh, either give its approval or not approval and uh, the planning board vote unanimously to approve this. As Andy said, uh, if you uh, grant the uh, appeal tonight, it then goes back to the planning board for site plan approval and they really get into the details and that type of thing. Um, one thing I wish to uh, address, or really the only other thing that, again, unless you have specific questions, is uh, the, uh, the uh, traffic uh, issue uh, at uh, Hillcrest. The um, community center, uh, most of the people uh, now and anticipate in the future walk to the community center, um, despite the fact that uh, we're 55 years of age or older. Um, the, it, the community center is not far from the locations, and uh, it, it, the residents have always walked um, practically all of them to the community center for the various activities. Uh, the streets are lighted, um, and they are quite wide. They're wide enough for two cars to pass, along with pedestrians on the side. And uh, I think this day and age, people like to walk if they can, and that's usually uh, what is done. The, um, there is a, um, a mini bus that's owned by uh, state manufactured homes that takes the persons uh, who are either are unable to participate or unable to walk or uh, just ask to be uh, given a ride. And uh, there is approximately uh, 16 to 20 parking places around the community center now. Um, and it's not anticipated that it be expanded because there doesn't appear to be a need to do that. Um, the, uh, and there has never been an uh, automobile uh, resident uh, injury as a result of automobile traffic. It's, it, there, there is no thoroughfare. The uh, community is a, essentially a closed uh, community. <coughs> the only traffic within the community are basically residents or persons uh, visiting a resident. So if. Uh, if anyone has a question, we'd be glad that there are, uh, the way the, I'm sure Brian can explain or it has referred to, there are uh, certain standards or issues that arise in the special exception uh, ordinance that, uh, that are addressed and I think are adequately addressed and really uh, we can address further if there's any question about any one of those. Okay. And, uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Great. Uh, if I can speak to Mr. Longstaff, do you want to speak to this uh, appeal? I know that I'd like to hear from the town if we could. Sure. Um, um, the appellant has pretty much stated the case. Uh, it's basically an expansion of an existing uh, structure. The structure was permitted back in the early 90s um, and constructed at that time. Uh, when they came in and approached the town with uh, the idea that they wanted to expand the structure, we looked into, you know, the, the zoning issues and all the other issues as we normally do and discovered that it's in the industrial zone and it's actually not a conforming use in the ex industrial zone and we're all pretty perplexed as to how that occurred. And the, the, the interesting thing to me is that the contract zone specifically allows the community center, but the, the, the boundaries of the contract zone, the way it was approved and drawn, go right around that parcel and don't include it. So we, we don't know how that happened. There's no documentation in the file to explain how, how that happened. And so the easiest, I guess the path of least resistance to get to, to, to a yes, uh, it was this miscellaneous appeal for an expansion of a non-conforming use, even though we believe that ever since it was built, everybody believed it was conforming and thought it was, everything was cool. We just couldn't, we couldn't find how that all occurred. So, um, so this is the route that they're going to. I know it's not the route they wanted to go to. They were just looking for a building permit and a site plan amendment. And, um, but this is, this is hopefully going to get them there. Uh, we certainly, um, I don't believe the town has any, uh, any problems with the expansion that won't be addressed during the site plan amendment process and if, if parking or wetlands or any of those issues that they normally look at uh, need some tweaking or some addressing, I'm sure that will happen at that process. Your job tonight is simply to decide and determine if the expansion of this facility meets the criteria that are, are laid out in the ordinance. Um, 
and, and if so, uh, you have an, a, a favorable advisory opinion from the planning board as, as Mr. Uh, Beal uh, um, alluded to, um, and I believe you all received a copy of the uh, email that has that in it. So yes. those, all of those prerequisite things have been met, and so now it's up to you to just review the criteria, and if it meets it, approve. If it doesn't, uh, you can deal with it at that time. Okay. Yep. So before we go through the questions, I'll open it up to the board to see if there are any uh, questions or comments for the applicant. Nothing at this point. So, oh, oh, oh. Is, is the expansion <coughs> the existing building is about 2,400 square feet? 40 by 30. Uh, what is it? 40 by 1,200. 1,200 square feet, I believe it would be. 1,200. Okay. 30 by 40. And, and you're going to expand it an additional 5,900 square feet or two? 5,900 square feet. I think 5,600, but yeah, uh, they're expanded, and it, my understanding is, and Andy might be able to answer it better, I think it's an additional 5,600. Yeah. Yeah. It's an additional 5,600. So it's going from 1,200 to 6,800. Yeah, there's a there's a thing about 60 by 40. Oh, is it 60 by 40? Yeah, I believe there's 2,400 square feet then at the bottom. So what what you see up on the, the drawing up here, up on the straight ahead, the so the white area of the building here is the existing building, and everything that's shown in the hatched area here is the proposed expansion. And probably 600. It's probably 60 by 40. Okay. So it's going to be about 8,000 square feet. It's all one to ten, it's all on one yeah. floor. Any other questions from the board? Go right ahead. I'm a little bit confused as to how something like this could get by us. You know, I mean, someplace it's got to be said, you know, where does this lot appear? Who's been paying taxes on this lot? It's been taxed. Do you get a separate bill? We've owned it for this year. Oh, I, I, I realize you've owned it. But do you get a separate bill for it? No. It's, it's, it's still part of the property, right? Yeah, it's just um, part of the property. It's just zoned. It's just zoned. Part of the property. The way the contract zone was drawn, it doesn't, it doesn't preempt them owning it. They still own it. But yeah. the contract zone that included all of the uh, manufactured housing community was drawn, drawn around it. Excuse and do we have a feel for when that was established? Um, do, we, do we have any idea? The contract zone... It's number um, seven in the back of the book. It, it is, yeah. I don't, I don't have the year. Well, maybe I did in my 2007? Four. Four. Okay. Yes, that's right. It was mentioned earlier. Okay. 2004. That was when the expansion was proposed. That's when the contract zone was created. At the same time, the wetland delineation was performed. It must have been part of that. I would expect so. Yes. Okay. So what was it prior to that? Prior to 2004, there wasn't a contract zone. It was just industrial. It was just zoned industrial, and then it and yet it, and yet it was a housing development, right? Because it started in 1991. So. It started 44? prior to any zoning, okay? The, the mobile home community, manufactured home community park was started long before any zoning was in place. So it was an existing use and perhaps a non-conforming use, but it was allowed to continue because it pre-existed zoning. Okay. okay. And the community center went in in 91. Right. Okay. 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 Any other questions? If you would be so kind to address the questions, the legal questions that we have to meet under the special exceptions. And it, am I correct that there really aren't any questions out of the miscellaneous appeal, but it kicks over to special exceptions? Is that true? Yep, that's okay. correct. So 
if you could announce the questions, go through the sir. Right. If, if you could go through each question sure. and then uh, give your uh, presentation on each, I would All appreciate right. that. Uh, section 3F of the zoning ordinance requires uh, has two requirements, and then it kicks into the special uh, exception okay. uh, one. So the two general or the two requirements in section 3F are that first the impact and effects of the enlarge of the expansion, which is the one that's applicable, uh, uh, to a nut to on the existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impact and effects on the non-conforming use before the proposed enlargement. Uh, so in other words, the, that, that's the first one, that the impacts on the neighborhood will not be substantially different than the, um, or greater than the impact and effects on the non-conforming use before the proposed en enlargement. In this can, you, can you explain the applicant's position on that, please? The, this has always been, as, as I've already said, it's been a community center. The impact on the neighborhood would only benefit the neighborhood, and there would not be any greater impact than uh, than currently the community center still is used. Or, I mean, will not be used for any different activities. Okay. Uh, that's the first one. Yes. And the uh, second part says that the expanded use uh, to another non-conforming use, uh, in other words, the expansion will comply with the standards for special exceptions contained in Section 4.1 in the Zoning Ordinance. So if you go to Section 4.1 uh, of the Zoning Ordinance, there are uh, conditions uh, A through H. I believe Sorry, are those in your packet here? A, A through I under special exceptions. Is that in the packet here? Is that in the packet, your answers to the, what you're just about to read? No, I don't think so. I don't think, I don't think they're not in the packet. You didn't address it, you didn't know. No, yeah, we'll look and state them on record yes. now and we'll capture okay. them. Um, the first, uh, uh, the use must meet the following criteria. A, the proposed use will not create unsanitary, unhealthful conditions by reason of <coughs> Sewage disposal, emissions to the air or water, or other aspects of its design or operation. Um, uh, the bathrooms won't, be, well, there'll be bathrooms in it, you know, and uh, there won't be any more sewage than uh, the members create their own homes. It's not going to change the amount of sewage that's flying anywhere uh, in the uh, community into the sewer. Um, the, uh, you know, these standards aren't uh, all entirely applicable to this particular. Uh, <coughs> um, uh, would it be possible to have the engineer speak to the design that's going to be uh, incorporated into the building, please? So the, the existing community center has um, uh, two bathrooms, men's and women's bathroom currently. I believe the intent is the expansion will add an additional two bathrooms. Um, the existing facility is served by public sewer and water from uh, the community. As Alan said, the, uh, the flows to the system are stated to be the same. The, everyone using this facility will be from the community, so they're either using the bathroom at their house or at the community center. So the flows in the system of the infrastructure in the street aren't, aren't going to change, and they're all adequate to handle this capacity. Uh, as we said earlier, moving forward with site plan approval, we'll certainly need a, a letter from both the sewage department in the town and the Portland Water District to confirm that the capacity is, is acceptable for this facility, but we don't see any problem with that. Okay. Is there a kitchen area within the facility? Is there uh, air emissions from that that we would have to be concerned with? There is a kitchen. Um, it's more of a function kitchen. I don't believe there's intended to be fry laters or uh, anything like that. It's more of a stove top, uh, you know, to warm things up, okay. uh, that type of thing. So I don't anticipate a grill with a hood where you'd have air emissions or anything like that. Okay. Any questions from the board on that first question? A. Thank you. B. The uh, second criteria is uh, B. The proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions 
when adding to the existing and foreseeable traffic in the vicinity. Uh, I think I've spoken to that. That was when I, in a sense, addressed uh, previously. Um, if there are any questions about that, as I said, the, uh, the uses will be essentially the same, uh, of course, as have existed. There has the uh, roads are uh, quite wide, and uh, most people walk. Um, You're not adding parking around the facility? There's, there, there, we're not adding any. Is Correct. that a question? No, that's not anticipated. Uh, there are 16 to 20 spaces approximately at, at the moment. Any questions from the board on question B? Okay, keep question moving. Question C. Criteria C, the proposed use will not create public safety problems which will be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree in municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. Well, I don't think we're gonna have any rock concerts, so there won't be any police problem. <laughs> and uh, uh, seriously though, the, uh, the uses exact will be, uh, as I said, it's a community center uh, for 55 and over community. And uh, the, um, all the persons, it will not be a public, uh, as I've said, it will be for the community, which is the existing use at the moment also. Any questions on public safety? Question C? Question D? Uh, criteria D, the proposed use will not result in sedimentation, erosion, or, her, or have an adverse effect on water supplies. Maybe Andy can speak to, uh, of course, this would be part of the site plan application. But Absolutely. Yep. Um, so if you look at the site plan that's kind of up on the board behind you, you can see the kind of dotted line that goes around the facility. This is the edge of the wetlands as it was delineated um, previously. Kind of comes around the outside of the building here. Um, so the expansion of the building is kind of designed around the wetlands. So our, our intent is to construct the building to not impact the wetlands. Um, we'll provide all pro uh, proper erosion control and sediment control practices during construction. Those will all be spelled out on our site plans as we move forward with the planning process, but we don't see any adverse impacts to the uh, downstream conditions or the abutting wellness. Any questions from the board on question D? I'll just add a quick comment. Yes. Um, that this was my largest concern with the application was the potential for any sort of contamination of the nearby wetlands. And given the explanation here tonight, um, it's Ms. Merle's professional opinion that there will be no impact to the wetland and that alleviates my concern. Great. Okay, feel free to move on to question E. Criteria E is the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual <coughs> impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. Um, as you can see from the materials, the uh, will be um, certainly compatible. In fact, it will enhance the uh, the neighborhood and the existing uses in the neighborhood, meaning uh, for the community. Uh, physical size does get larger, and you can see what the intent is. It's all uh, significantly. It's all a single story, which is. Uh, compatible and uh, with, with what's there now and compatible with the neighborhood. The neighborhood is, all the homes in the neighborhood are uh, manufactured homes, uh, either uh, modular or uh, manufactured uh, homes. The uh, intensity of use will not significantly change. It will be the same community essentially as is presently served. Great. Any questions from the board? Question F. F is if located in a shoreland zone, it's not located in a shoreland zone. Correct. So that gets rid of F pretty straightforwardly. G is the applicant has sufficient right, title, or interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. The, um, the property is owned by the Deposit family and state manufactured homes has a uh, lease, renewing lease option to, uh, is to the, corp the corporation is owned by the same family and has a lease for the property. Any questions from the board on right and title? Question H. 
<laughs> Actually, it goes through I, doesn't it? H says, the applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to Section 5 of this um, section. Um, BH2M is going to be the uh, technical advisor and uh, I believe quite qualified to advise in this respect and are uh, known by the town of Scarborough to be such. Uh, the financial ability, um, certainly if the uh, uh, planning board requires any evidence of financial ability, we'll be able to provide it. The, uh, over the past two years, the expansion that's occurred has been more than $5 million for the uh, expansion, so that's certainly provide evidence if required. Any questions from the board on H, financial ability? <coughs> No question. Final question, I. I. The proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. Um, well, the existing use is the same. Um, and the other use in the neighborhood are the residences and, uh, and the homes will be using this. Uh, the generation of noise and hours, the uh, all of the events or the activities will be scheduled by the uh, community and they will certainly be compatible and not um, interfere with the enjoyment of the uh, peace and quiet of the neighborhood in the, at any appropriate hours. And is there a plan around operation for the facility uh, hours-wise, you know, 8 to 8, something like that? Pretty much whatever the residents desire. There's never anything other than Partying on until 1 o'clock at the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I had to ask the tough question. <laughs> All right, great. Okay. Any questions from the board on question I? Seeing none, uh, I would like to reach out to the public. If anybody would like to speak on behalf or against, please step towards the podium and they can speak on the appeal. Seeing no interest, I'm going to close the public portion of the meeting and go back to the board for discussion, questions debate. I look at this one as very straightforward. The situation that is created and uh, is now against the applicant and they're fighting for the appeal is not created by them. It's an error that we clearly made somewhere along the line that we never picked up on, so we never knew about it. I'm um, looking at the uh, size of the building they want to put up. They want to increase it by about, say, 200 to 300 percent. But if you look at the growth of the community, they more than are going to be more than doubling. So it kind of makes sense to incrementally increase it so that you can cover what you have. And I don't know if they can expand in the future, but it gives them some flexibility to uh, for future growth as well. So rather than doing it multiple times, it gives them the chance to do it now up front, get the capital in now and, and stop. Uh, again, I think they've answered all the questions uh, in the right direction. I think they've got good answers. I think it covers their bases, and I think it covers our bases. But um, if we want to talk more, we can certainly do that, or we can have a motion. But if we do, I do want to go through the questions individually and vote on them, unless we feel that we can do it in one vote on all of them. And that I would like to discuss. I'll make a motion to approve appeal number 2619 as presented. Second. Now that's seconded, I would like to vote on the questions just before we close it. Uh, do we feel comfortable voting? on all of the questions at once for up and up and down approval versus going through each. I think, I think we've done a I think we've done a reasonable job in, in answering the questions as we went along and uh, you could see our approval went, as it went along is pretty straight straightforward and clean cut. So I'm fine voting it straight up and down. So um, all those in favor of the questions in section excuse me, miscellaneous appeal a question F and the A through I questions in the standards for special exception. All those in favor that the applicant has met those in their presentation. Unanimous. So now to vote on what you had uh, proposed for approval. Uh, one more question before we move further. Are there any letters that were sent in that we no. need to address? Okay. So no more feedback from the public. So we have a motion. 
Second. And it's been seconded? Yeah. All those in favor of approval of appeal number, excuse me, I gotta get it right. Thank you, 2619 as presented. Unanimous. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Two, six, one, nine, nine. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no change, right? We just put yes. Correct. Correct. Appeal number 2620, a limited reduction of yard size request by Scott and Tracy Giles. Thank you. Uh, 12 Black Rock Road, Sessions Map 89, Parcel 2. Please approach the podium, tell us who you are, and uh, give us an idea of what the appeal is about. My name is Kevin Brown, Kevin Brown Architecture here representing uh, Scott and Tracy Giles on their uh, lot reduction uh, appeal. Um, a brief sort of description of the property at 12 Black Rock Road. Uh, it's, a, it's an existing home uh, on a good sized lot with a lot of um, deep, you know, just different uh, dune, shoreland zone, dune restrictions, uh, floodplain restrictions. Um, we've been, we've met with the town a couple times and we've met with DEP a couple times, just understanding the constraints on the property and what's possible for renovation and expansion of, of the, the home to make it a year-round residence for uh, Scott and Tracy. Um, in our findings, what we've found is to, to do the type of expansions that we want or just sort of renovation that we want, we would need to lift the house for DP regulations on, and put it on a peer foundation. So that is our plan to, to start with that. Um, the other part of, the, the other part of the, our plan is to expand really the only, we can't expand the footprint at all. So we're stuck with the foot, current footprint that we had, uh, what, that we currently have. Part of the house is a one story house. One is one story, the other part is a full two stories. So our plan, and I don't know if the slide is up here, but the side that has the one story, we plan to put a second story on top of that uh, and make that as a, to add basically more storage and more living space. Because currently the house is only a two bedroom house and the goal is to have a three bedroom house as well as um, added storage. Currently there's a, there's a basement in half of the house, the two story part of the house and we would be losing that when we're going up onto the pier foundation. So obviously the, the storage is, 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 mu is much needed elsewhere since we're losing the basement. Um, so the addition, and I don't have the little pointer, but the, the addition, as you can see, would be on top of the, the, the two-story piece over in here and expanding upwards. The one challenge, as we looked at this, there's a, there's a, 50, there's a, um, there's a right-of-way that goes through the property. The, the property itself is a pretty large parcel considering the location, but there's a 10-foot right-of-way that goes right through the property, and we have a 50-foot set, front setback on either side of that right-of-way that we can't do anything in. So that's why we're here asking for the 10-foot reduction in the, in the front setback, just to do the, the second floor expansion um, in this quadrant here. Um, and really, this, this, the square footage for what we're adding on the second floor is really less than the amount that we had in the basement. So that's, you know, we're really not gaining any more square footage than we than we had. It's just making it, you know, a little nicer. Um, so that's that's the, the main reason that we're here is just to ask for the, the appeal to reduce the setback by 10 feet, just to allow us to do the full expansion on top of that existing footprint of the of the house on that on that side of the house. Um, a couple of notes that came up in the in the staff notes um, was about you know the we, one thing that we neglected to talk about in our in our application was the, the front steps that were you know that we we need to right now that the house is at grade so there's no steps getting into the house. So by lifting this house up I think it's about four feet to the you know in terms of where we have to provide stairs to get up to the house. We would have a set of stairs off the front of the house coming towards the, towards the right of way. 
and right now we have them coming straight out um, from the house. And, and the goal with that is really two access points to the house, the, that front door and the, the, the rear door that has sort of a uh, U-shaped set of steps. Um, so the goal with the straightforward, straight shot steps is really to move big items in and out freely. Um, so that's why we did, you know, I wanted to just address that's why we, the stairs are coming straight out. The other thing I wanted to bring up, and we didn't show it on that plan, but there is an existing bulkhead uh, to the left of where those new stairs are drawn. And you can kind of see it in that, in that, yeah, that right there. So that comes out about six and a half feet currently. So these set of steps would only be coming out another three and a half feet further than they, than they currently are in terms of encroaching on that, that right away. Um, I think overall, I think that cover, kind of covers the points I wanted to sort of bring up about it. I'm free to answer any kind of questions that you have on the, on the appeal. Any questions from the board at this time, please? Can you explain what the right of way is all about? There's uh, be five other properties down at the end of four. Oh. Yeah, they're on kind of a it's, it's Black Rock Road is kind of along Ferry Beach, and there's 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 a point, so it's only one way in and one way out. So they have to cross over their property to get to access. Oh. So, so it's a road. It's a road. Yeah. And it's used continuously. Yeah. Some kind of seasonal. Yeah. So it's not a sanctioned road by the town. It's a right of way to those properties through yours. But who who created the fifty foot setback from the edge of the right of way? Where did that come from? Want me to answer that, Mr. Chair? Yes. It, the, the property is in the rural farm district, the RF district. The setback from the road would be your front yard setback, which is 50 feet in the RF zone. So even though their road is narrower than a normal road, it's still a right of way, and there still has to be a front yard setback. It's odd that it splits the property, but that's not the town's fault, Ed. <laughs> we, we didn't do that. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's just kind of odd. It, it is. It's we different. would institute something like that on a right of way. That's yeah, okay. basically 100, 110 feet that they can't use yeah, right. the property. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Thank you. So, if I could take a moment, mm -hmm. some more stuff. Would you like to speak, speak to the appeal? Uh, sure. Um, again, the appellant has has pretty much stated the case and I think the drawings uh, are, are really excellent in illustrating the um, development constraints, if you will, on this slide. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I probably talked to 10 or 13 people <laughs> about uh, purchasing this lot and my first comment was run as far and as fast <laughs> away as you can. Because <laughs> at every every turn there's a constraint in the, the first constraint is shoreland zoning. Uh, it's all completely within the first 75 feet to the highest annual tide. The second constraint, if you're going to do anything to the house, because of the shape the house is in and its value, you're going to um, you're going to trigger substantial improvement under the floodplain development ordinance, which means you now have to elevate the structure to meet floodplain. And while you're doing that, as you mentioned, you're also in the frontal dune, so they're going to make you put post piers or pilings in anyway, mm -hmm. as will the flood hazard development, because most of it's in the velocity zone and not the, but it does have a A zone behind it. Uh, the new flood maps have it substantially, um, it's actually currently in an A zone, and the new flood maps put it in a velocity zone, so obviously the smart choice for anyone trying to improve the structure is to is to um, uh, develop it in a way that meets the floodplain uh, ordinance that we expect will be in place in 2019. There's no sense throwing good money after bad. <coughs> so um, it also because it's in the frontal dune, they can't move the footprint, as, as, uh, as the appellant's uh, representative said. Um, the road that, um, that um, Mr. Blaze mentioned <laughs> creates another problem because you have a 50-foot front yard setback that has to be met. As weird as that may be, it's, it's there. And 
Uh, luckily, uh, as they've as they've demonstrated, it, it could meet the limited reduction of yard size, 10 foot reduction or 10 foot relief on that 50 foot setback, and still be able to get inside that window. So that was, you know, very very fortunate because they would not have had any uh, other option but to come to the board with a standard hardship variance which may have been much more difficult to um, meet the criteria for. So I think they've done a, a, an excellent job of minimizing, although they didn't have much choice, they, they've done a good job of making some improvements that um, make the home serviceable for them, uh, at least in, in, in planning as proposed. And um, they, they added some space, which they are allowed to do. They're still well well under the 30% um, expansion within the shoreland zone. Um, and again, the issue we've always allowed when someone has to elevate a structure, we recognize that it is not always possible, if not practical, to um, access that elevated structure and still meet setbacks with, with the stairs, um, nor is it practical to try to create something out of stone or some other landscape feature. It doesn't work. Um, the trick to that, I guess, and in, in where I would, where my comment in my staff comments was going is, is it the minimum amount necessary to service the structure? And that's, that's a, a debate, a debating point, I guess. Um, and, and so I only pointed that out so that you were aware of it. Um, they absolutely have to have stairs to get into the structure. The discussion about where those stairs would be located. And the elevator's not an option? Come on. <laughs> Perhaps a trampoline? I don't know. <laughs> See, there you go. Um, we do try to think outside the box. <laughs> but but that, that's basically it in a nutshell. It's a very difficult property to do anything with. Uh, but it's also a kind of a kind of a historic property. I mean, that that whole area has quite, got quite a history behind it. The Black uh, Black Rock area, as I'm as I understand it, is it was one of the first navigable, uh, identifiable points from the ocean. The Black Rock yeah. uh, hmm. could, could actually be spotted by ships out at sea. So it's got it's got quite quite a history there. They also just recently put a lot of money back into the road to shore that up because it was going into the into the river. <laughs> So, so I think that you know this is a, an excellent way to preserve the property, maintain its. Um, I think its style uh, is very fitting as proposed. I think it goes well with the the, the uh, area. It's obviously going to increase the size of the of the, the house. Maybe I'm, I'm not sure how it compares to all the other houses. I have been down to the end of the road and it was a relatively small uh, house at the end, I believe, but. It's still, I think they've done a, an excellent job of, um, at least with their proposal, and, and now it's up to the board to determine if all of the criteria under the uh, limited reduction of yard size um, have been met. I will say that they, they certainly have met the criteria for the age of the structure being in, in existence prior to uh, July, July uh, 3rd, 1991. Uh, and uh, they have not started construction. So those two criteria you don't even need to address because are met. So. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the board? So you, the, the proposed lifting, you're going by the new guidelines when you're doing that? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Phase lift, yeah. And to one question that uh, or one point that Mr. Longstaff had brought up, uh, the front stairs, right. they come directly out perpendicular to the front of the home. Did you consider hitting a, maybe a larger landing and turning so you could still get larger components in the home and you might save three or four feet going towards the road? <coughs> had you taken a look at that? We did. I think the architecturally we were just trying to, you know, trying to make it sort of the presence to the front door, just seeing the front door in full, I guess, was sort of our argument. You know, they're not wider than they need to be. Yeah. Three and a half feet wide. Certainly. Uh, the landing is <coughs> just enough to stand there then to then walk in. And, have and it's not covered, it's an open... There's a little two-foot roof just to cover a little bit of the door. door. That's about it. Okay. Yeah, just to shield any weather. From, if it's a wood door, it's usually required anyway. So how much farther they come out than the bulkhead is now, did you say? Three and a half feet. 
that's just a matter of how many steps we need really to cut down that height. Okay. I don't see any more questions or comments right now from the board. Uh, why don't we go through the uh, questions around the limited reduction of yard size? Sure. And if you could not just read them in, just explain your thought process behind them, it'd be great. You want me to read the actual, actual question to start? Or? Uh, yeah, just let us know okay. what that question is about yeah. and then your uh, explanation about it. Uh, you. The general description, we don't, we don't need to go through that. No, no. you did that already. Okay. Thank you. So starting at uh, B. The list of exact list of exact dimensional reduction requested. So we're requesting 9.94 feet, and that's just just under the, the 10 foot maximum that we're allowed. Um, Thank you. Do you want to pause at each one, or no? Keep going. Go right You're good. And we uh, will ask questions as we go. So okay. If uh, if uh, board has any questions, please put them out there. Okay. Uh, the existing buildings and structures on the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size residential is requested were erected be, be prior to July 3rd, 1991, or the lot is, or the lot is a vacant, non-conforming lot of record. <coughs> the existing um, lot and the home, the, the one-story piece of the house was built in 1952. Uh, the two-story piece was added in uh, 1970s. Great, it's pretty clear that one's met. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, the requested reduction is reason reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. Again, it, we're, we're trying to sort of it's a two-bedroom home, so we're trying to make it a three-bedroom home. We've looked at other properties down the road. I think it was uh, number 16, Black Rock Road, has four bedrooms. Number 18 has five bedrooms, so we're just trying to make it more in line with some of those, make it a year-round home. And those are permanent homes as well? Yes. Thank you. Um, due, to, due to the physical features of the lot or location of the existing structures in the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new new structure in conformance with the currently currently applicable yard size requirements. And I think we've demonstrated just sort of the footprint can't move. The you know we're kind of stuck in the, where we are, so we're just trying to move up on top of where where the existing footprint. Is. Um, The impacts and effects of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or st structure on existing uses in the neighborhood will not substantially will not be substantially different from any from greater than the impacts and effects of the building or structure which conforms to yard size effect. Um, again, this kind of goes back to the last one where. We're, you know, we're proposing the, the, the structure, but it's not going to change. I'm trying to remember which one this was. You're less than the 30 percent. Less than 30 percent. Yeah, we're at 20, yeah. 28 percent. Great. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any, um, questions, any questions from the board thus far? No. Okay. Yeah. And then the last one we, was about not. We haven't commenced construction yet for the property. And I think yeah. Mr. Longstaff addressed that one yeah. as well. So we'll do. Okay, thank you for your questions. Uh, I'd like to open it up to anybody in the public that would like to speak to this uh, particular appeal. Seeing no one, I'm going to close the public portion of the meeting and go to the board for questions and discussion. Uh, again, my opinion, I appear, it appears we're lucky again tonight. This is, to me, another pretty straightforward appeal. Um, you are landlocked based on uh, conditions that you didn't create and uh, the zoning has stayed well I think the zoning here has stayed pretty consistent but the shoreland has moved or the, the the grading of the shoreland has moved so you're doing the best that you can to protect your property increase its value uh, and take it from a uh, non year-round resident to a year-round residential property so um, I, uh, what I see is something straightforward, and I don't see that they are taking it or taking advantage of the town or uh, any of us boards to try and build beyond what is allowed. Um, we 
did we get any input from uh, we did not. letters? So uh, we haven't heard anybody from the public as well. So uh, clearly there's not too much resistance to it. So it uh, sounds like you're doing the right things. Uh, anything else from the board? I'd have to agree with you, Mr. Chair. I think you've done a nice job at illustrating the renovations that they're keeping within the 10 feet that they can request. Um, it's nice seeing uh, the diagrams and the illustrations here. It's just sort of a, a model for applications in general. It's nice to see everything clearly laid out. And as you said, they're not, they're not overreaching. They're, they're not trying to reach for the, the sky on this one. Right. So I appreciate that. And I think, I think you could swing the stairs sideways but it doesn't make for much of an entrance to the home. Right. So um, I think that would kind of work against the character that you've designed in to keep character <coughs> in this case, and I think it would work against that. So I wouldn't recommend it on this case. Anybody else? Any, uh, if there's no further discussion, a motion from the board or? I'll make a motion to approve appeal number what is it, 26, uh, 2620? Yes. Second. As presented. Second. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Good luck. Um, Mr. Yes. Chair, can we use this as a model application for future <laughs> applications? <laughs> <laughs> you, you guys had all of the all of the tough things to address. Yeah, we, <laughs> give them another we five feet. <laughs> we don't want to play favorites, but you win. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Just for that, you get to have fifteen. Thank you. <laughs> now, board members, we aren't off the hook yet. We had delayed the uh, election of officers. So that is something we need to address before we close the meeting. So, uh, Mr. Longstaff, what do we need to do? <laughs> Buddy, pal, friend. Um, well, every uh, every year, the first meeting of the year, the board is supposed to elect a, ch a, a uh, chair and a secretary according to the, the minutes, uh, not the minutes, but the uh, board uh, bylaws. Um, in my experience, we've never elected a secretary yeah. on the board because the secretary's duty is to take the minutes. Oh, right. So uh, I think I think maybe um, somewhat um, we can in, informally we change that to a vice chair. So it's sort of a chair and a vice chair yeah. um, had been sort of the way we've gone uh, okay. in the past. So. Um, with Mr. Maroon not here, I did uh, email him and ask him, uh, you know, just just so that you guys wouldn't get stuck if if he was going to either accept or not accept a nomination. Should that happen? Mm -hmm. No way was I advocating that it happen. It's up to the board members. The the officers are elected by the the, the board members. If you feel comfortable going forward, nominations can. Can come to Rick and be and be voted on the same way you would vote on any other motion sure. for the board. And uh, what was his opinion if you were? Not I never heard back. From you. Okay. <laughs> well, he didn't show up for the meeting. Exactly. <laughs> but you know so, the rules. So based on if you're not here, <laughs> you're in, yeah. I'm going to make a motion to uh, elect Mr. Maroon chair. If anybody would like that discussion on that, I mean he's a second. Thank you. All those in favor? Can we just? Can, he's not here. Can okay, we discuss. discuss. Let's have a discussion. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, no, my bad. Here. Take that back. Yeah. So, I, go I, ahead. My assumption is he needs to be here to accept, especially because Brian just said he did not respond. I was yeah. going to nominate you, Rick. I think you did a very good job tonight. I think you were very thorough, and it went very quickly. Uh, <laughs> I nominate Rick Lloyd. <laughs> well, you can do it based on her, right? Yep. Do it based on her? Or I mean, it was a bit luck. Uh, that we have I two easy cases, so what, <laughs> any, like any and all nominations no. can, can can you know a nomination can come and sure. can be seconded, and then discussion can happen, and then a vote can be taken, um, uh, or uh, you know so so I guess the thing is if somebody's nominated and the vote's taken and it's not a majority vote, sure. then you you can move to the next nomination. The thing um, has to be hit. I don't. Can I don't. We, know, I mean, there's no guidance. I'm sorry. There's no can guidance. Can we delay I'm, this until the next you, meeting? You absolutely could, and I yeah. said that at the beginning. You okay. can table it for the next meeting if you okay. would rather do that. 
But I'll force him here. But <laughs> I, 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 I honestly don't know. I, I know. I don't want to. I don't want to talk out of turn. I, I'm just not sure if he wishes to continue to be chairman or not. Should he be nominated? I, and it is to Mr. Shoup's point. It's kind of unfair to nominate him and elect him chair if he, in fact, doesn't want to be chair. I think, I'm sure he well, probably I think it's totally would. fair, but I understand. But how can I? I how can any one of us know that? <laughs> Certainly. I would, I would agree as well. I mean, as much of a fan uh, as I am of hostile takeovers, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, it would be nice. It would be nice to have everyone here. Uh, however, um, with Ms. Shoup's p potential nomination of you, I would second you to be the chair. You so. both are sick people. Sorry. <laughs> I, and I think I think I think uh, Chairman Maroon has done a great job, because he's been the chair since I've been here on the board. Um, and uh, from, there's not nothing for me personally, but I would like to see just a, a fresh, a fresh look on things for my own personal experience, uh, as as like as we move forward, as my time here increases on the board infinitely. I think your points are fair, and I think uh, since Mark is absent, why don't why don't we consider tabling? That way he can uh, be here to hear discussion and be involved and. I think it would only be fair to. I believe give he missed the last vote when he was voted as well. I think he ducks so out on purpose. Well, yeah. in, in Mr. Chair, um, in, in all fairness, um, if you wish to table, that's a vote that yes. the board has to take. Yes. If, the bo if the board doesn't want to table and they would rather vote to make your chair, then that's <laughs> that's the way it would go. Um, just putting it out, yeah. that out there. Yes. So. Shut up. <laughs> so currently, what's on the floor right now? Uh, we've had two nominations and one uh, discussion so Pam, to, 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 to the table. Yours was an Hers was a nomination. So I, I didn't have that. Do you want to see if we want a table you first? Seconded that. Yeah. Well, before we go too far, are you willing to even do it? You've got a lot on your plate as well. I certainly do. Uh, knowing my what I have for travel with my company. It would be difficult for me to be here um, every month, and, I, and if I had to guess it, I'm going to be missing probably three or four of the meetings over the next next year. Is my guess. Um, now I did I did uh, go to the town and ask to submit my application to become a voting member this year, but they said that you and Mark renewed, and so I think for me personally, I'm disappointed that I was. They said don't apply because you're renewing. And so I, you know, I actually, I would love to be an active member in this because I'm only an alternate. You know, I don't, I'm not going to have a say next time because right. I'm an alternate. And so I think it's just disappointing that, you know, um, I want to share that's going to be here all the time and um, members are going to be here. Certainly. I have a question. So, Mr. Longstaff, you have mentioned that there is a vice chair. It's basically the backup for when the chair is not here. Yes. Is that also yes. a nomination and a vote as well? I think when Mr. Loisel came back on the board, I believe that Mr. Maroon had <coughs> made the request that he be taking the vice chair position because I believe Mr. Stark was the vice chair prior to that. Correct. I think they just put me in Jim's kind of just spot. slipped into that seat. Um, and then back when, when Mark wasn't on the board a few years ago, you, Mr. Loisel, and Mr. Stark shared the chair position and that's kind of when that really sort of started and that was due to both Correct. of you having schedules that wouldn't allow you to be here a hundred percent of the time and you knew that. Correct. And so you were able to, except for one occasion. And yeah, one know. occasion where I got put into <laughs> the role. You had neither one of you were. Uh, 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 I was actually a short of being. You did good. Yeah. You did good. I yeah. that. Yeah. Do yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I, what, what I'm going to recommend is uh, we should vote both chair and vice chair in, yeah. So that I think it's only fair. It shouldn't be an appointment. It should be a vote of the board. Um, me personally, I like to have Mark here, but I mean, I, I mean, we are a board. So, what do you guys think? What, what's your opinion? I do think you, we should table. Table. Yes, but if you table it to Ms. Shoup's point and Mr. Maroon's here, does that mean she doesn't get a vote? Correct. That's true. So that's fine. Uh, I don't necessarily think that's correct. We could we could allow the vote to occur by voting that vote in, right? I don't know. 
I'm, I'm, I think if we made a motion and then voted it in and allowed you to vote, then you have as much say as anybody else. It probably wouldn't be, um, it, I don't want to say it's not an important a point, but it wouldn't be challenged anywhere right. if we did it that way. Right. Uh, I, I like the idea of a lot, you know, for yeah. when you're electing the entire board votes, not the just entire the board members. Votes. I like that idea a lot. And, and I personally don't like, I'll get up on my soapbox, I personally don't like the alternate uh, positions not being able to vote mm -hmm. at every meeting, and I don't like the idea that somebody can get stuck in an alternate position and never move up to a full voting position. For nine position. years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's where I'm at. But we still have one alternate position open, too. Though. Yeah, we have an alternate position open. So, I, you know, but I don't know what... Again, I don't like it. There's nothing right. I can do about it. Um, it's not my system, and it's not your system. It's the system that was set up. Right. So, um, the alternate position. I, I don't want to uh, convey the the idea that the alternate position isn't important. I think the alternate positions are important because the discussion can still take place. Yeah. You can still ask questions. You can still bring up points. Just because you don't get a vo vote. You, you actually, the alternate, can actually sway the rest of the board uh, or bring up things to light that they haven't thought of. So I think I don't want to in any way diminish the importance of the alternate positions. I think they are important. And many times, full voting members aren't here. Yeah. And that's when they're mm -hmm. really important because they fill right. that hole. So in no way do I ever want to downplay that. And I know Mr. Shoup and I had a long conversation, and, and I, I basically begged her to, to continue uh, and stick with it because I value, I, I, I want, I, I, I'm mad that we don't have um, the other alternate position filled. Mm -hmm. um, we, and, and to that point, I would like everyone to kind of beat the bushes, and I know Karen has, uh, beat the bushes, at, you know, at your workplace, um, at, at kids' games, you know, talk to other adults, other residents of town, see, think, think who, who might be willing to, to jump into this. No you know, crazy about Mark, Mark isn't going to want to do this forever. Right. I, I'm sure of it. He, he, he took a year off before, and I, you know, I think everybody will eventually. You know, and, and I like to see some younger blood. You know, I like to see somebody who doesn't have hair my color. Hey. <laughs> he's got hair and he's complaining. When I first came on, your hair was darker. Yeah. Was. <laughs> that was my time. I do that to people. Um, <laughs> But I, I, you know, I would like to see fresh blood to, to yeah. Mr. Heber's point. I, I think it's good to get fresh blood. Doesn't mean that past chairman or current chairman can't continue on the board right. uh, and still contribute. But it's kind of nice to have somebody else take that role, just so that there is some fresh, you know, a new cadence, a new, yeah. a new style. I think that's important. I think the board can get bogged down kind of dragged down by this, and, and again, nothing against any chairman. Uh, everyone has their own style and yeah. their, own, their own cadence, and I just think it's nice to change it up every once in a while. And I'll go back to the year that you and, and, and uh, Mr. Stark uh, shared that role. I think that was a good year. I think, I think we did an excellent job. I think the meetings clipped along at a nice pace. Um, the questions were thorough. Everything went well. I, I, I really applied you both. Uh, you both did a, and as did Mr. Mr. Leroy, did a great job. You do, have, you do deal with a maximum amount of terms, too, and that's why Mark had to take a year off, because he was forced to. Me, too. Yeah. yeah right. I was forced to take a year off. I, I don't understand that, because I, there's nowhere in the bylaws where the term limit... Where, where you term. can do three, three-year terms. Yeah, that's what they told us, three, three years, and then you have to step written, away. It's not written. Yeah. I don't know where they got it. I got something pretty close to that, actually. Well, I think what's frustrating for me is I do have interest in being chair, but yeah. I will never be chair because I'm serving here for nine years as an alternate, and then I'll be out. Um, well, no, no, because you, no, you could run for a vacant. Yeah, no, 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 no. And then you go, you can move up to oh, a yes, position. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah. and I think what I've now seen, though, is like Rick's, the position that Rick got came open, but it wasn't advertised to us. So I missed that opportunity, and I was told not to apply again. And so... I don't um, know why you couldn't resign as an alternate and run for an open full voting position if one ever came up. But I thought you automatically went from alternate to voting you you the last well first that alternate was, moves into the voting. That was the slide. situation when right. you when you came on board. But that did, that's it, it's up to the board and, right. the, and the chair as to how he wants those positions filled. Because I did move in that way. I was an alternate yeah. first. 
But I think I only have two years left, so. But anyway, we're, we're getting a side of. But if I can also add, now, now that I'm aware of the situation in the shoot, there is some things that we can do as a board to um, give you more presence on the board. Just because no, I really do feel like I do have a lot to offer. I think I've expressed before that I literally sit next to the chairman of the South Portland Board of, the board, uh, board of Appeals. And yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm talking to people, and I understand, I think, a different aspect than probably what you guys are doing, where it's like a legal thing for me. And, um, you know, I'm sort of new, but I feel like I can add some value to this. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm consistent. I can be here. And um, I feel I would like the opportunity, but, you know, I'm pretty eager, and if I'm going to be an alternate for nine years, and if you want to get young people involved, again, I think I said the same speech last year. Mm -hmm. It's you're kind of losing people. It's hard to. I had an attorney who was somewhat interested, but when I said it was an alternate position, it was not interested. Yeah. And fortunately, with them, it's the prestige of having a voting position. Yeah. Um, and so. It's ideal so, for someone who who doesn't know what this is about but has an interest in serving and wants to kind of come and observe, it's a great opportunity as an alternate to come and observe and participate right. and yet not have the pressure of having to vote on anything. Not that there's <laughs> tremendous pressure, but it's, it's a, you know, I think the whole alternate position was really created for either outgoing members who, who wanted to come back on and just participate or new members who want to get their feet wet and then move up into a, a chair. I think it's unfortunate that it has to take if it's three consecutive three-year terms, it's unfortunate um, that it would have to take nine years, you know, if everyone wanted to. It's good that people want to continue, don't get me wrong. That's yeah. good, too. That's a good thing. Um, but fresh blood is a good yeah, thing. Fresh blood is a good yeah. thing. And young blood is a good thing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so, so what I was going to say about Ms. Shoup's situation is it doesn't mean that you need to stay as alternate even though we have a full board. I mean, just because I'm here doesn't mean I need to be a voting member on a certain month. So I'm, I'm more than willing to step back and say I'm not going to be voting this week while someone... No. I don't know that you I don't can. think we can do that. I think yeah. it's one or the other. I don't think you can do uh, that. Either. I could sit in the audience. Well, I mean, you could say you're recusing yeah. yourself. Yeah. I don't think we've ever actually recused ourselves or anything. We've always brought but you'd have to have good reasons yeah. for yeah. that. Right. I don't trust myself. Otherwise, you'd be shirking your duty. <laughs> no problem. And you're not you're not a shirker, are you? Well, you know, I don't want to spend more time life. on myself. I think I'm just kind of representative sure. of my generation, and I don't know if James feels that way. But you know, we kind of get involved, and we want to feel like we're participating in part of it. You know, I I'm a very busy life, but I I like this stuff. Yeah. And so I do want to be here, and part of it. Um, you know, unfortunately, I did reach out to Mark. I had a lot of questions about the meeting we had last month, and he's not gotten back to me. So I am looking for, I think, a little more leadership on the board as well. Because um, I have a lot of questions that I'm not comfortable asking on camera that are just general and stuff. I'd love some more guidance um, and things like that. And back, and back to my point, and which was kind of hashed already, but for, again, my own learning, continued learning experience on this board, I like to see just something fresh. Again, no insult to anyone, but I want to see different styles, and I want to see fresh approaches, and uh, I want to see some change. I mean, not, I mean, not like change, but like boot everybody off, obviously, but you can me off. I'm up. A hostile, <laughs> hostile takeover, but um, I do want, I do want to see uh, some, ro some more rotation. So with that. I, think, I think those are all fair comments, and I'm glad you feel comfortable enough to say them on record, so that's good. It's on record. So are we tabling or are I we I believe voting? it's still being recorded, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> are we tabling or are we, are we voting? We're tabling. Well, so so is there a motion to table? Yeah, I made a motion to table. And did someone second? Okay, whatever it is. Do we have a motion now? Anyone a second? I'll second. All, the, all those in favor of tabling until next meeting? Three? I don't know what difference it's going to make. Uh, we have majority at three, so yeah. you can still vote no. And that was two no's. Really? That's okay. I have to vote against the grain every once in a while. See, I always better now than <laughs> during the appeal. Okay. Yeah. So we will table till next meeting, and uh, we'll discuss next meeting. We'll okay. Bring up some room in with us to make sure it's here. Anybody have anything else before we close the meeting? Thank you for doing it tonight. Oh, my pleasure. I'll Good job. Pay, pay back to Mr. Maroon. He'll 
I'll get him back. <laughs> it's all good. Hey, he knew no coming in. No, other than I would reiterate I, again, I encourage <coughs> I encourage everyone to look for um, someone to fill this seat. Um, all the help I can get. I, I was lucky enough to be able to get Mr. Hebert on board. I think I talked him into it. I don't remember. By accident. Shoot. <laughs> I think it was in, in exchange for a permit, right? <laughs> yeah. Oopsie. That's still live. Cover the mic. Only, 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 only joking. Hit only he was joking. <laughs> no, only joking. But no, I mean, every once in a while you get lucky and you find someone who wants to step forward and do that, but it's not. Right. A lot of the people that come to see me aren't necessarily willing to do me any favors. You know what I mean? Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. We think this is going far enough. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Thank you, everybody. Have a great night. I can't find the second paper we signed. Oh, I didn't. Give yeah, me I, I, I got it. Mm -hmm. I